Hello, welcome to Zoonosis with Joy. I'm Joy, and today we're going to be talking about why you should keep your cat inside, and why I'm against the idea of outdoor cats in general. I hope you enjoy this video, and even if you're on the opposite side of this debate, I hope it's something to consider at this point. So the reason I'm making this video is because I ran into a paper that is arguing for the opposite position of mine, that cats should be, and actually must be, given access to the outdoors. I'm going to post the uh, title and the abstract of the paper here, um, so you can take a look at it for a few seconds. Definitely read the paper, I would encourage you to engage the argument on your own. But essentially what the argument is, is that cats need to have access to roam outside, to have a full range of pleasurable experiences in their life. The idea being that cats need to express their natural behaviors in order to be happy. And if we deny them this, then we're actually doing something that's against their general welfare. And therefore, we must give cats uh, access to the outdoors. Now, you may have heard uh, people arguing that they should have, you know, some access so that maybe it's beneficial for cats to have this access. But this is a much stronger argument. It's an argument for moral obligations. And I think it's one that leads us down to some dangerous paths. So I have three different rebuttals, um, three different re areas where I say this is a very weak argument. The first is that cats actually do quite poorly outside. It actually can harm them quite a lot. Um, it's quite obvious that today in our contemporary societies, we actually have a lot more risks outdoors than we would for cats that live, um, you know, might have lived during the Neolithic or earlier periods. We have cars, we have traffic, we have trains. These are all things that cats can encounter when they're outside and actually can kill a cat, you know. More than half of all cats, 90% of all cats that get into a vehicular collision actually end up being euthanized when they're presented to an emergency. And think of how many, how few of the number of cats that actually make it to that point um, actually survive any of these encounters. So they're quite dangerous that way. Um, but even if you discount some of these kind of threats in their environment, there's always going to be predators. You know, feral dogs, for instance, are in many parts of the world. Um, we have coyotes in North America. They've actually done studies that show that coyote feces in Calgary have, you know, up to 2% of their droppings are composed of cats. And in LA, the coyotes, it's about 13%. So coyotes are hunting cats. And I've unfortunately had a friend who lost their cat due to coyote attacks. And I've had a few friends who've experienced things that are similar to this. And it can be quite traumatic if um, you end up uh, having that happen to you as well. Other things that are in their environment that can be a threat to your cat as well. Um, you know, think about all the poisons that we leave out intentionally and unintentionally. Intentional poisons would be things like rat poison. We leave these things out to kill pests that are living in our environment, but cats just as easily can eat these or eat the animals that have immediately consumed them and develop fatal poisonings that kill them. There's also unintentional poisons such as antifreeze. Antifreeze is quite sweet in animals like licking it up. It actually can cause major organ failure and kidney failure and kill them within a matter of about 48 to 30, uh, 36, well, 36 to 48 hours or so. So it can be quite a rapid death. And then of course there are always the parasites and the infectious diseases. Free roaming cats are going to be exposed to things like FIV and FELV. These are both viruses that can cause immunosuppression. Cats will also encounter things like ectoparasites, you know, your fleas, your ticks. Fleas carry tapeworms, ticks carry Lyme disease. Both of these can cause major, major uh, morbidities in cats and even deaths. And finally, there's also uh, things such as protozoans. Um, I talked in my last video about toxoplasmosis, the zombie parasite. And that's not just a threat for cats, that's also a threat for owners. And that brings me to my second point. The idea that this is actually more dangerous for the people living at home than it would be if they just let their cat stay inside. So if you have a cat living at home with you, then and they're going outside hunting prey, they are shedding parasite eggs in your home. They are bringing in things like, you know, uh, fleas and ticks in your home, which can then affect you. And as well, you know, cats do get exposed to things like rabies vectors. And then, you know, if your cat's not up to date on rabies vaccines, they become potentially exposing you and your family to those sort of things. If you have immunocompromised people, children, and the elderly, this can be quite deadly. Uh, cats in urban settings, uh, as a recent paper pro uh, pro pointed out, uh, actually shed more toxoplasmosis than cats in the countryside. So there are quite a few health risks for cats and for humans, but what about the environment? And this is where I think the linchpin of the argument comes in. If you're an animal lover and you're arguing that it's better for cats to be going outside, then you have to acknowledge that cats kill billions 
I'd say billions of birds each year. We don't know exactly how many, but in the United States, it could be anywhere between one to four billion per year. Now, it's one thing for this to happen in the United States and Canada, you know, if we get cats that hunt fledglings and cause massive die-offs, but in places that are ecologically vulnerable, like Australia or even New Zealand, this could actually cause the extinction of species. Letting cats roam around outside um, means that you're putting a bunch of native uh, birds and native mammals at risks of being hunted to extinction. And cats don't just stop hunting when they're full, they actually will do it for fun. So they will kill animals in the environment and cause lots of morbidities to the environment and cause ecological havoc. So if you're an animal lover, you shouldn't be letting your cat outside unattended. Now, there are alternatives, and I think there are great ways of getting your cat exercise and having you know positive interactions for it. I'm a big fan of the catios. Um, these are kind of setups where cats can go outside in the fresh air and uh, they're enclosed so the cats can't leave and they can't go explore the neighborhood. There's also things such as, um, you know, you could get uh, platforms in your home. So now there's some great videos on YouTube of this being done. You basically install shelving units in your home to allow your cat to jump and climb and play. That's one thing that you can do if you have them strictly indoors. Now, there's some people who say, well, what about a leash? Ah, leashes are so-so in my opinion. Cats could still catch birds, they could still catch rodents, and you know, cats do escape from the leash quite frequently. So it is one of those things that if you are thinking about leash, you know, you should be aware of those conditions. Cats that are on catios and cats that are on leashes still need to be dewormed and vaccinated regularly because they are going to be exposed to the environment. Now, all cats should be exposed to rabies, even for the very small risk that they could actually, you know, contract it from a bat that flies inside and expose a human being. But Parasite prevention, any cat that goes outside should always be on a regular preventative for that. Now, that's kind of all I had to say about outdoor cats. I think it's kind of silly that we're telling people that it's okay or even recommended or required morally to let our cats outside. Now, there are quite a few things and if you are a guardian or a caretaker or an owner of an animal, then you have a responsibility to take care of them and do the best that you can for them. So. I don't think this oral argument really holds up to any scrutiny, and I think uh, I would leave it to you to kind of decide for yourself, but I give you that information, read up on it yourself, arm yourself with knowledge. And if you do have any questions or want to point out anything in the comments below, have at it. Um, until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.